Hey guys, here we are in uh, lesson 10, module 3, video 1, and today we're going to be talking about using known products to multiply fractions greater than 1 by fractions that are less than 1. So if you don't know what a known product is yet, well, you're going to be finding out. So let's get into it. Work on our known products in lesson 10. Okay, right here you can see we have a problem in front of us. What do you notice about this problem? What do you see here? Let's take a second to analyze it. Do you see one half times five fourths? And we're looking at the overlap there, right? Because this would be a fourth, but we have the overlap of one half and five fourths. And you notice that we have two, right? So two pizzas, two pans of brownies, and that there's five fourths. So that's why we have two pans because it's more than one fourth. Okay. This is the model that Leo is using to find one half times five fourth, obviously one half times five fourth there. We talked about the two squares because we have more than one. And Leo says that one half times five fourths is equal to five sixteenths. Do you agree? Hmm. Think about that for a minute. Do you agree that this is equal to five sixteenths? Let's write five sixteenths here so you can think about that. How many squares do we have all together? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there are 5 out of 16 colored in. Okay. But remember when we're talking about fractions, we get our denominator from one of them. So it would really be, hopefully you're thinking that it would really be eighths. And it would really be the number of eighths that are colored in which would be five eighths. And that makes sense too, because one times four is eight. I mean, sorry, two times four is eight and one times five is five, right? Okay. So what mistake did he make? He added all the pieces together, right? He looked at all 16 pieces, which we could see could be a problem you could make. All right. When we use models to multiply a fraction greater than one, we must be careful to use the correct number of units in one whole and not the total parts that we see. So we have to think about the number in one whole. And today we're going to be using known products to multiply fractions greater than one. So we'll talk about that really soon as well. This slide that looks like this, it's called using known products with fractions greater than one. So go ahead and tear that out, put it into a dry erase sleeve or use it with a pencil, whatever's gonna work for you. One in your book, use the known product to make a simpler problem and show your thinking. So let's work on these together. Um, look at the area model that you have in your whiteboard and think about what you notice there. Okay, hopefully you notice that you have two squares and they're all broken into sevenths vertically and fifths horizontally. So when we say sevenths vertically, we mean that we have six lines going up and down, which makes seven pieces. And when we say horizontally, we mean that we have five rows going this way, four lines. So that would be fifths going this way. Okay, so we have... 30 fifths, 30 fifths. We have two squares. So is our fraction going to be more than or less than one? We're going to be looking at fractions that have greater than one. That's why we would have two pieces, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and look at number one. And we have one fifth times six sevenths, one fifth times seven sevenths, and one fifth times eight sevenths. Are there any problems involving fractions greater than one? Did you notice this one right here? Eight sevenths. 
right? Greater than one and seven sevenths would be the same as one and then six sevenths would be less than one. Okay, so problem one looks like expressions we saw in uh, our last lesson in lesson nine. How did we make a simpler problem here? We rewrote it as fractions, unit fractions times a whole number. Do you remember that? Unit fractions times a whole number. Okay, so we're going to be working on that again today. So hopefully you remember it. Problem number 1a, we see 1 fifth times 6 sevenths. So if we're going to take kind of like separating our fractions and then the, the unit fractions from the whole numbers. So 1 fifth. Okay. 1 fifth. Let's erase this one. One-fifth times, and the one-fifth is already a unit fraction, right? So then we're just going to take our one-seventh, and that's going to be times six. Now, don't be thinking that it's like multiplying by a whole number. What we're basically just saying is that we have six of these one-sevenths, all right? So think about the um, sevenths that we have here, right? One, and then we have six of them, two three, four, five, six of them. So one seventh times six is kind of what you're saying there. Um, and then one fifth times one seventh is going to be one thirty fifth. And how many one thirty fifths do we need? We need six of them. So let's get a different color and talk about what that means. So one fifth times one seventh is one of these little guys, right? So one of these little guys, one thirty fifth, six of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six thirty fifths. And that would be our answer to one A, six thirty fifths and oh, there we go uh, six thirty fifths and we multiplied a fraction with a lesser value than one by a fraction less than one right so both of these are less than one and our answer is less than one do you see that right okay just kind of clarifying and let's take that off the screen and go ahead and work on b Okay, one fifth times seven sevenths. Now we don't want to change our seven sevenths to one, even though we know it's the same as one. We want to keep it as seven sevenths, and I'll show you why. Because we're going to say one fifth, and then we're going to change seven sevenths to our unit fraction, one sevenths. But we have seven of those, so we're going to multiply by seven. So now we have our known. Uh, product again. And a product is an answer to a multiplication problem, right? So what we're looking at when we say known product is one fifth times one seventh is one thirty fifth. So we already know that's one thirty fifth. So then our answer is going to be seven thirty fifths. You see what we're saying when we say a known product? Of course, you can multiply it. One fifth times one seventh is one thirty fifth times seven is seven thirty fifths. So our first one was 6 35ths. Our second one was 7 35ths. And now we're going to do the last one on this problem. And that's going to be 1 5th times 8 sevenths. Once again, breaking it into unit fractions. Remember, unit fraction just means that it has a 1 on the top times 1 5th times 1 7th times 8 taking everything back to unit fractions and then putting your numerators, basically putting your numerators over here. So one fifth times one seventh, we already know. It's our known product. That's one thirty fifth. One thirty fifth times eight is going to be eight thirty fifths. Okay. 
And so we have eight thirty-fifths. We have seven thirty-fifths. Sorry that my writing doesn't fit on the lines. And we have six thirty-fifths. Those are going to be our three answers that we got for A, B, and C today. And when we multiplied a fraction less than one and a fraction greater than one in C, is our answer greater than one? No, we, these are all small, right? 6 35ths, 7 35ths, 8 35ths. This is 35. So think about six of these, seven of these, and eight of these, right? We're just barely filling in these top boxes, all right? Uh, let's look more closely at the factors of each problem and compare them to the answers. So everything was multiplied by one-fifth. We now have our known product, one-fifth times one-seventh, okay? And we see that not always when we multiply by something larger than one is our answer going to be larger than one. Okay, great. I'm going to see you in... Um, video number two. Thanks so much for your kind attention. Aloha.